Alrighty then. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla. So today I wanted to talk you through in case you guys ever wanted to try to make your own melted crayon art willow tree. This is something I saw on Pinterest. It's not my original idea. I just took it to a whole other level. <laughs> but I love melted crayon art and I thought a lot of you like melted crayon art too. So I'd love to go ahead and teach you guys how I went about making this melted crayon art. So let's go over supplies. You can have any type of size of canvas or any type of canvas, whatever you would like. I have a 15 by 30 canvas that I got from Michaels. Make sure you check Michaels and Hobby Lobby coupons because that's gonna be your best friend. <laughs> and then you need Crayola crayons. You need the specific brand of Crayola because if you use any other type of brands of crayons, it won't work as well. Crayola has a very thick wax, so when it melts, it doesn't turn into a puddle. It actually piles on top of each other, and it just, it's so much better. So try to avoid any other brand of crayons because Crayola is going to be your best friend. You're gonna need the essentials like a jar for water, some paint brushes, and a paper plate for paint. And when it comes to paint, I just use regular Americana craft paint. It's acrylic craft paint. It's nice and thick, and I get it from Michaels, and it's like a dollar a piece, so it's fantastic. And some glitter. You don't have to use the glitter, but I like adding glitter because it just adds a touch of wonderful mysticalness. Since we aren't attaching the crayons to our canvas, you're gonna need a piece of cardboard and some duct tape. It doesn't have to be Galaxy. And I would suggest not to use any picture duct tape. Get some nice silver duct tape just because it's gonna be stronger. I think the Galaxy tape was a little bit weak when it came to melting crayons. Just a heads up. And last but not least, you can use a hair dryer, but I have a heat gun. Now, I've had a heat gun for years just because my family is in the racing business. So I have this decal heat gun. It does burn. I'm warning you right now, if you use a heat gun, you will burn yourself. I, I'm just warning you, you just have to be super duper careful. I have a high tolerance for melted wax, hot glue, and heat gun by now, just touching it. I just, it doesn't even bother me anymore, but I'm warning you, make sure you have some parent supervision or adult supervision before you start this wonderful craft. So let's jump in. So you're going to first draw out your tree. It doesn't matter what kind of tree, it's up to you, but um, willow trees, they're tall and usually their branches cover the most of the tree. It's okay to add as many branches as you want. You just wanna give the impression that it's still a tree. And when it comes to painting trees, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and I do the purple first and add a little bit of highlights to it. But then I go step by step where um, I let this part dry. Layers upon layers, people. I really love using layers when it comes to paint. But I start with the nice purple. I go ahead and on that first layer, I add a little highlight and then I let it dry. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I like to go in and fill in those spots with some black and once again, the, there is a high possibility all of these branches are gonna get covered by crayons and melted wax, melted crayons. It's gonna happen, so it's okay to have it there just in case you can see a little bit of the tree. Um, maybe with a hair dryer, it won't be as intense, but I left the whole top part of my canvas completely wide open. Didn't paint it, didn't even bother to paint with it because I know my melted my melted wax is gonna go ahead and cover it up. But it's just it's just a preference. I've made one of these so far and this is my second one and I have to make a couple more. So this is just my experience, but here we go with layers. Once again, I am adding shadows, purple, purple, black, dark purple shadows. For the grass, I do suggest you get a little detailed because you are gonna see your grass. So I like making like this phantom looking grass, just like it's kind of ghostly looking. It's not extremely detailed grass. It's totally up to you how you paint the grass on around your tree. Uh, but just know that the bottom of the tree, the trunk, it's gonna be seen, but the branches, don't worry about it because your, your wax is gonna cover up the branches unless you don't make it to the branches and I would pay a little bit more attention to the branches that are kind of close to the bottom of your painting. Here we go, where we pick out the crayons and the colors you want. I went through 12 boxes of crayons for this one painting, just so that's a rough estimate of how many boxes of crayons that you need. 
I would suggest for you guys to go ahead and take this melted process outside in the grass, but you know me, I like being rebellious and I stayed inside <laughs> and opened a window with my heat gun. I set off the fire alarm. Once again, parent supervision. Don't trust me, I'm an idiot. <laughs> But, okay, so when it comes to the crayons, what you want to do is you take your taped crayons and you hold it over the top. Now, what you want to do first is layers upon layers. I feel that should, like that should be a t-shirt of mine. But you want to make your crayons, the first batch of crayons that you have on your piece of cardboard, you want to go ahead and let the crayons start to make those willow tree branches. You want to start having those droplets coming down. That's the first thing you want to focus on is getting, don't worry about completely piling them on top of your, your actual canvas. You want to make sure you start getting them going down the canvas and making those branches. That's the main goal of the first batch of crayons. Always make sure that your canvas is at a slant so that it's going down the canvas. You don't want it straight up and down. You want to go ahead and create that effect of it. Just You just want to make the puddles because you want it to be stable. If you're holding your canvas straight up and down and not at a slant lean, leaning up against something, um, the branches will be easy to break off and they just, they start to be like, like you know, they just the wax starts to melt and it starts to pile on top of each other. So make sure you have your canvas at a slant as opposed to standing straight up and down. So of course, yes, you're going to see a bunch of smoke because it's funny because it's not the paper or the cardboard catching on fire, it's the wax inside the crayon paper, which is really funny. Um, it's just, it's, it's so weird. So that's why I always say, be careful if you're gonna use a heat gun, make sure you have a parent or an adult standing by unless you're my age and you're just going to be an idiot and go ahead and set the alarm off and just do it inside the house. That's why I say do it outside and make, a, make sure a hose is nearby. Don't be dumb like me. <laughs> uh, but so when creating the second and third layers, you want to make sure you keep that effect of, you don't want to mush around, you don't want to push around the cray crayons too much. You want to keep the effect that there's still branches that need to be made and you want the branches on top of branches. You want to make it look like a willow tree. So it's going to take a lot of trial and error and some experimenting, but it's totally up to you guys how that goes. But if you, I like to push the branches down, the ones that are already made, and push those down because that's where I can get my glitter in and I've, I put the glitter on and then I melt the glitter into the wax, that way it, nothing flies off. No glitter flies off so it's stuck inside the wax in there forever. And then I put my final layers on and I just I make sure that I get that effect and then finally my last step is to go ahead and give it the leaves effect, like the leaves are actually coming at you and that's pretty easy. You just lay the canvas flat down on whatever surface you're using and you just do little droplets of wax and crayon all over the top of your canvas. And I like to shake it around just a little bit just to, to get that different sizes of crayon wax droplets and just leaves and that texture of leaves like they're coming at you and it kind of smooths out the top just a little bit as well because you have those stripes and if you use too much heat on the stripes at the very top it kind of get like it makes it spread out and it doesn't look as thick it gets really thin just because it's tired wax the wax is tired from being tortured and melted so this gives it a little bit of a chance to just to go ahead and give it a cool effect on top of the tree it's really fun it just it's a fun to experiment and of course the last thing is I like to go in and I like to melt the little branches that I have made because they're very easy to break off and this kind of stabilizes them by putting a little bit of stabilization puddles around them so they don't move around and break off but there it is it's a lot of fun and I do go in and it's a little bit wet as you can see that the one we just made here's the first one that I ever made and then what you can see is the black background is the one we just made uh, I do go in and I touch it up any wax parts that are not supposed to be in the black background I go ahead and get rid of them but yes it's a lot of fun it takes a lot of experimenting but I definitely would suggest anybody to go 
and try this. It may work with a hair dryer, it may not. I have not tried a hair dryer, but if you're really serious about crayon art, I would go to your local Home Depot or Lowe's store and pick up a heat gun because crayon art, there's only one way to use crayons and that's to melt them. Just kidding, I love crayons. But yes, guys, I hope this was helpful and give it a go. It's a summer project, let's do it. Have a great day.